stand here.
sets in a way, and, and it changes all the time in terms of character and so on. So why don't we talk about something simpler, um, which is the intonation. So you know there are some keys on, on the violin that are notoriously difficult to play in tune. Um, one of them is E major. I'm sure we have all heard problems with E major. <laughs> So 
let's say, Brahms concerto. <laughs> Thank you. 
activity coming later we need a little bit of repose. <laughs> So there are exceptions to this 
when my thumb stops, does it still work? The, the, I've, good, I've got good news, which is when you have double stops and chords, it not, it's not like all your new, new low notes become high notes and all your high notes become low notes. I think they are just less extreme. So if, for example, in D minor, your F is low. <laughs>
Leo two and two, I might know him from a few years. Uh, so, so there's not much to change now. The one thing I would change for sure is the bowing at the beginning, for one reason only, which is you have such a big sound on an open E eighth note. That alone is, I, I would say, a no, no. You know, there's especially baroque music. There's this whole idea of what is heavy and what is light, and classical music in a in a way still continues that continues that very much. And then in the Romantic period. What's heavy and what's light is kind of reversed sometimes. For example, small notes in Baroque music are light. Shorter notes are light. And in Romantic music, we then sometimes, you know, we sing out 30 second notes just so for the fun of it to be romantic. But we cannot do that in Bach. So an eighth note in the theme. <laughs> It's probably light. It's not. So when you do, you see, when you when you use that whole uh, on an open E, it's, it will never be light, but it has to be light because it's the eighth note on the dotted rhythm. It's just according to the very simple rules of baroque music, it just doesn't work. Maybe you can find a different bow distribution.
Jesus. This time now it's not this pompous baroque, big French overture style, but now it becomes a, a diminished version of it with only soprano and an alto singing. Imagine two, two voices very clearly but very purely singing together. And that, that is actually an amazing event if you realize that after all this grandeur, grandeur it suddenly becomes... <laughs>
it's never quite predictable. But what we do know in God, what is predictable, is a slur means an emphasis. So when you have a long slur, it means a big emphasis, and when you have a small slur, it's a small emphasis. Um, from example on... So, 
and you can do much more things with the sound. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 